Will this $60 Amazon Boost Converter actually stand up to HF Communications? And how will it fare against the MFJ? Let's find out. Hey everybody, Stu, AG6AG. I was at the Micro Field Day event uh, that's put on by a really uh, good buddy of mine, uh, W6KME out here in Thousand Oaks. And he, um, he had this device, this little box, this little thing, and he was running his radio off it. And I said, hey, what is that? And he says, oh, uh, it's a you know, 12 volt to... Uh, 13.8 volt converter so I you know don't lose transmit power and I said really where'd you get that he said Amazon and so I went searching on Amazon and I I found one looked like it I'm not sure his exact specs this one is uh, 13.8 30 amps um, it's from China I don't know if it'll be 30 amps uh, but it was only 60 bucks and you know um, the standard with all of us amateurs out there is this little MFJ here. Um, uh, this little unit right here, the, um, uh, my goodness, uh, MFJ4416. And this is the B model. Uh, they have a C model now, big heat sinks and all sorts of other stuff. Uh, still only rated at 25 amps. But to be honest with you, uh, I, before I really use this thing for serious operation I'm going to put put it through some tests and then I realized that if I was going to put stuff through tests hey why not bring you along so let me go ahead and do a product comparison against the $229 MFJ and the $60 XWST oh um, and if you don't mind and you have a chance go ahead and click on the subscribe button if you like the stuff I do and uh, if you like this video click on like okay uh, anyway with that let's get on with the show all right well let's start by doing a visual on these um, the MFJ excellent unit um, two different methods of hooking your power up it's got the uh, power lugs as well as the power poles um, let's see, uh, it has a remote uh, port on it right over here and a coax port right here. Now, what the coax port is for is you can actually tell this by pushing the switch here on the front right here uh, to go into battery boost. And uh, uh, it says always on or when transmitting. And if you run your coax on a T into here, what will happen is it will sense when you're transmitting and then execute the boost at that time, saving your battery. Um, really nice feature. Uh, I also like the remote too. The remote is another like $90 or $100 or something like that though. And uh, uh, you know, you got to draw the line someplace on this stuff, right? Um, this unit is routed, uh, rated at 9, 10, or 11 volt uh, low battery threshold settings. And uh, this thing will handle uh, just about anything. I mean, I've used these out in uh, the field. I've used them for field day. I've used them and had great luck. These are nice little units. Um, they have a little trouble if you plug them into a cheap power supply. Uh, but, uh, you know is what it is. You don't really want to plug them into a power supply anyway. They're designed to be plugged into a battery to boost your power. So let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, XWST. Um, this is basically it. This is the whole thing. This is like reminds me of uh, uh, back in the uh, 80s. This is what the uh, electronic ignition modules look for for Ford. Uh, <laughs> Um, it's uh, claim to fame, of course, is that it's waterproof. I don't know if I'd submerge it. Um, there's no adjustments whatsoever on this. And I guess, uh, you know, being the way that it's sealed and everything else, if something goes wrong, you're not going to take it apart and fix it. Um, although it is only $60 uh, on Amazon Prime. 
and there will be a link, a link down below as well as a link for the MSJ. Um, anyway, so with that, um, I can't talk much about this because there's not much to talk about uh, other than it's supposed to work. Now let's see if it does, okay? All right, I want to show you uh, the rig I'm setting up to test uh, all this stuff with. Um, we're going to simulate our battery in out of this Alinko. Uh This is a DM330MV, and this actually allows me to adjust the output power so I can verify what the uh, system is actually doing, these little um, uh, boost converters are doing. Uh, you know, under different power load circumstances. Um, over here, this is a uh, wind camp fuse block assembly, and I'm basically using this to protect all the test equipment and the devices under test. Um, I'm just going to toss this out. You know, when I was messing around setting up to do this, uh, well, I burned a fuse. And thank goodness I had it going through a fuse, because if I didn't, I would have damaged the equipment and I wouldn't have been able to do this video. Um, now, under here, I just want to pull this out. This is a 1 ohm, capa or one ohm resistor, uh, and it's basically on the opposite end of it. I've got a Anderson connector, and... If we need to put the devices under load, that's what I'm going to use to load it. And if you do the Ohm's Law, yeah, it puts about 12, uh, 12 amp pull on it. So we'll be able to see reactions on the scope. So, uh, with no further ado, let me uh, get the next shot set up and we'll start testing our devices. All right, so we're going to go ahead and turn on the power supply. And that purple line right there, that purple trace is the output of the power supply. Okay, we're not doing anything to it yet. We're just reading it. And we're right there. We can see that it's uh, tw oh, 12.29, 12.31. We'll just call it 12 and a quarter. Okay, the yellow trace is going to be, of course, our um, boost converter, the XWST. Let's go ahead and plug it in. All right, so all right, so what we're seeing here is ripple. Okay, uh, now ripple typically is uh, caused oh uh, usually by the inductor as it switches back and forth. It uh, uh, it it bounces a little bit, uh, and you know eh, I'm looking at peak to peak. That's one point eight bolts peak to peak on uh, the ripple there uh, that might be a little high um, all right I'm 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 not very happy with that concept now we are our RMS is 13.92 volts right so it is bringing that up now um, the frequency up here that that ripple appears to be at is pretty low. I mean, it's at about 10, 8 kilohertz. Uh, odds of it interfering with us, uh, probably not real big. It probably won't pose a problem. Although it could. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, let me come over here. I'm going to take a reference of this. We'll save this as reference A. All right, uh, and that's only on uh, channel one, and I'll leave that on. And I'm going to go ahead and unhook this boost converter. There we go. And I am going to grab the MFJ. And let's see what it looks like. All right. So I'm going to hook the DC load to it. Or excuse me, the DC output from the power supply to it. And now I'm going to hook the scope 
to its output. Give me one second here. There we go. All right, so there's absolutely no ripple in this. Uh, our RMS is about 14.1 volts. I've got this adjusted a little high. There's also no load on it. So, you know, that's that's going to be probably apparent at that point. Um, so we can tell right now that from what we're looking at with no load, let me go ahead and I'll turn off the uh, reference from the other one. Um, we're pretty much, I mean, let me adjust my trigger just to see if there's anything there. No, no, nothing there. It's absolutely clean. Um, under 10 hertz, whatever it is. So they've really managed to clean up that signal. Um, all right. Let's see if we can see how it behaves with a load. We're going to go back to the other one and see the same thing. But I'm going to go ahead and load this, or try to. We'll see how good a job we do here. Um, I don't know if I got the load on there or not. Let me adjust some stuff down here. See if I can get a better stab on this. Hmm. You know what? I don't think I've got the load working here. Let's see. Ah, there we go. There's the load right there. And I still see no really noticeable ripple there. I do see that my voltage here, my input voltage has dropped down to about 3.7, 3 po or 11.7, 11.8. Uh, so I'm definitely getting a load on here. Uh, and I certainly am uh, pulling amps off this power supply at this point. Looks like we're pulling about 15 amps, which sounds about right. But I see, you know, let me play with this a little. I really see... No ripple. All right. Very impressive. Okay. So let's go ahead and we'll shut this off. Go ahead and see if I can discharge this before I put it away. There we go. And I'm going to unhook everything here. And hook back up the uh, XWS. And let's go ahead and hit some power. We'll power it back up. And there we go. Well, there's that. So I'm going to go ahead and install an inline capacitor. Um, you know, this capacitor is probably a little underrated, uh, but we'll give it a shot. Let me go ahead and plug it in, and hopefully it'll do what I think it's going to do. Let's see. That is exactly what I expected. All of that ripple went away. Every last bit of it. Uh, let me make sure that we really... Yeah, we have no additional frequencies or anything writing in there. So, yeah. All right, so that basically, uh, well, what does that tell us? Okay, so what that actually tells us, um, and of course right now we're at 13.92, and we're at, uh, yeah, input voltage is great. Um, what that actually tells us is that when they engineered this um, device, this uh, um voltage booster, DC to DC booster, 
it basic they basically uh, didn't put in enough capacitance on the output uh, in order to get rid of the ripple. Now, um, let's see what it looks like under load with this capacitor. We'll go ahead and uh, hook it up. There we go. We're under load. Um, the only thing that looks like actually happened is our input uh, voltage drop down below 12 volts um, but we literally we got rid of all that issue so I mean I would probably say that the capacitor that I want in here is going to be oh I don't know maybe a, uh, a thousand uh, uh, microfarads I don't know um, and, um, you know, someplace around 50 volts, just to make sure that I don't uh, have any issues with uh, too much voltage going into it. Um, but, hey, I mean, that's a, that's a what? That's a dollar capacitor. Okay. So, yeah, I can put one of those on and use this. This, is, this looks acceptable. Uh, well... I took the next step and I plugged it into my rig and uh, I used it for a while and it worked fine. Um, it uh, didn't dip when I was transmitting. It seemed to work just perfectly with the battery feed on it. So, um, hey, for 60 bucks, um, that's a great price for what it does. Now, um, full disclosure, I mean, you know, the MFJ, it's got screws on the side. I can take this apart. I can open it up. I can replace bad components if I can figure out what's bad in it. Um, it uh, basically has the external uh, controls on it to where you can put a piece of coax into it and basically have it only initiate, initiate while it's transmitting. There's a big benefit to that if you're, you know, seriously in a disaster or running off battery power. Um, I'm thinking that if I'm going to use this thing permanently, I'm going to need to build some sort of a bypass switch for it. Um, and all that stuff, all those components bring the price up, but it doesn't bring the price up to 230 bucks. So um, right now, after the initial tests and everything, I'm, I'm kind of sold on it. Um, anyway, I'm going to put a link down below to the actual little device. It, again, is a XWST uh, 12 to 13.8 converter, um, and it's the 30 amp model right here. And uh, I'll also put a link to the MFJ uh, in the comments as well. So, uh, hey, um, if you like the video, do me a favor, you know, subscribe. Leave me a comment down below if you have any questions or if the video helped you at all. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'm Stu, AG6AG, and I hope to hear you on the air.